Okay, so we're now ready to start creating our fluid simulation. And for that, we're going to use the Pyro Solver. So let's press the Tab key. Let's look for the Pyro Solver node. And we will connect our source into the first input of the Pyro Solver node. So make sure to be on frame one. Also, we want to turn on real time toggle. And now let's start setting up our Pyro Solver. So first of all, I'm going to change the color of the node. I'm going to call it ink simulation or ink sim. I will also move away here in my viewport. And let's just press play to see what the default simulation is looking like. Okay, so nothing very interesting here. So first of all, what's happening is the density is dissipating very fast. We can also see that the simulation is very low resolution. So you can see here the individual voxels, especially if you get closer. And probably one very important thing is that the density is falling very fast. So let's go one by one and try to fix all these issues and have a better looking simulation. So first of all, before I begin tweaking the simulation, there's something very important that you need to be aware of. Here under the color parameters, create CD and alpha fields is by default turned off. So it is very important that we turn this option on. Now remember, we are creating our own color value through DOPS, but still we want the fields to be created within the simulation. So this is very important. Don't forget to turn this on. Now, if you scroll up here under the voxel size, this is the resolution or the quality of the simulation. So the smaller this value is, the greater the resolution will be. So let's start with 0 0.05. And by the way, we can also link this value to our initial particle separation. So let's do that right now. Let's right click on this voxel size, copy this parameter, and then look for our points from volume node, and right click on the point separation and paste as a relative reference. So usually you want your source volume to have the same resolution of your final simulation. So now that that's taken care of, Let's try reducing the voxel size a bit. Let's go with 0 0.04. And again, let's press play. So notice how the edges of the sphere are much smoother now, since the voxels are smaller. So another thing that's bothering me is the density is completely gone after just a few frames. So here under the solving tab, look for the shape tab and notice how the dissipation property is on by default. So in reality, we won't want the ink to dissipate or to disappear over time. Let's turn this parameter off. And again, let's go back to frame one, press play. And this is more like it. Notice how now the density won't dissipate. So now we're getting some very nice swirls and motion, very similar to what we had on our reference. So before we go into tweaking the motion, let's go into the sourcing and let's see what's happening here under the hood. So first of all, the density value that we created is coming in from our point and within the simulation, a density field is being created. Now, the pyro solver is also creating a flame field. In this case, we won't need this field because the flame is used for fire. So we can turn off or even delete this field with this remove button. And now notice that the solver is trying to generate temperature based on a temperature value from DOPS. The thing is, Currently, we don't have a temperature coming into the simulation, and that will be very important for the behavior of our ink. So since we don't have a temperature value created, we can use this density 
and copy this attribute into the source volume. This way the density will also be used to create the temperature field. If you scroll down you will also notice that the VEL field is being created based on the incoming V attribute. So this we already set and remember we have a vector of minus 5 with some curl noise and this velocity is what's pushing down our density and creating some very subtle initial swirls. So before I talk of the temperature and the effect that this is going to have on our density, let's take a look at how the velocity is influencing this simulation. So for now, let's turn off the temperature. So you can change the operation to none. Later on, we will bring it back to pool, but for now, leave it in none. And let's go back to our velocity node. And let's increase the scale of this curl noise to see the difference between both simulations. So notice how we have a much more turbulent initial velocity here. And I think the swirls are kind of large. So probably we could still decrease the swirl size. But for now, let's go with this. Let's bring back the scale again to 1.5. And now let's take a look at the basic direction of this velocity vector. So as we did with the points, let's increase this x value to 5. And sure enough, now we have our density being pushed in a 45 degrees angle. So this velocity attribute will be very important for the final look of our simulation. So let's go back to frame one, change the velocity x to zero. And now let's talk about the temperature value and how this temperature will affect our simulation.